Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering role of automation in DevOps, examples of popular automation tools, what are artifacts and what is artifact repository, and also I will explain monitoring and feedback stage in DevOps. Guys, I have uploaded complete DevOps subject tutorials. I will provide that link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started, guys. Role of automation in DevOps is nothing but we will automate repetitive tasks. For example, whenever developer writes any new code, that code is automatically compiled and executed, and then that code is tested. And if everything is working well, that code is automatically placed in server. Here in DevOps, all this work is automated by using various kinds of tools. So the role of automation in DevOps is to automate repetitive tasks, improve efficiency, and ensure consistency. through the software development life cycle here by using automation we will achieve efficiency and consistency efficiency is nothing but complete work is done by various kinds of automation tools so we will complete work in very short time so we will achieve efficiency and consistency mean correctness as complete work is done by various kinds of automation tools there is less chance for errors so complete work will be correct this is meaning of consistency so by using various kinds of automation tools We will achieve efficiency and consistency. These are various kinds of automation tools in DevOps. First one is Jenkins. We never developer writes any new code. That code is automatically build. Build is nothing but compiling and executing. So building, testing, and deployment. Complete work is automated by using Jenkins software. And whereas by using tool like Maven, we will perform automated build process for Java based projects. Whereas this JUnit and Selenium are testing tools. will perform testing whereas by using junit we will perform unit test and whereas by using selenium we will perform integration test and whereas by using tool like ansible we will configure our server before actually placing application in our server at first we need to configure our server so that work is done by ansible and whereas by using docker we can create docker image and then we can place the docker image in docker container guys we will not place our application directly in server at first what we will do is we will convert our application into docker image and then we will place that application in docker container and then we will place that containerized application in server so by using docker tool we can create docker image and we can place that image in docker container guys whereas kubernetes is software and the software is present in server so after creating docker image and placing the docker image in docker container we will place that containerized application in kubernetes so we will place our containerized application kubernetes and whereas gitlab and github are websites whenever developer write any code he will place that code in github website so whenever developer place code in github then continuous integration and continuous deployment takes place and whereas the chef is infrastructure configuration and management tool that is nothing but we can configure softwares databases storage devices servers etc and whereas this puppet tool is it infrastructure management tool and whereas terraform is cloud infrastructure management tool these are various tools that we use in devops next i will explain what is artifact guys artifact is nothing but executable file for example i am developer i written code whenever i write this code and i place that code in github that code is automatically build and tested build is nothing but compiling and executing if compiling and executing is successful then that code is tested and if the testing is successful then artifact is generated artifact is nothing but our working software and this artifact is a file this can be any file like var file or rar file or any other file and we will store this artifact in one location we call that location as repository so artifact repository is nothing but where our artifacts are stored we call that location as artifact repository there are two types of artifact repositories they are jfrog and docker so in devops artifact refers to the output or result of the software build process this artifacts can include compile code executable file documentation or any other files generated during build process after successfully completing build process artifacts will be generated either that artifact can be any file either var file or rar file or any other file and this artifacts are created as a part of ci cd pipeline and used for deploying and releasing software this artifacts are created in continuous integration and continuous deployment process and next one is artifact repository get this artifact repository is also known as binary repository 
or we can also call it as artifact management system. It is a centralized location where these artifacts are stored and managed. We will store all our artifacts in one location. We call that location as artifact repository. So it serves as a secure and reliable storage solution for storing and versioning artifacts through the software development lifecycle. Not only we will store artifacts, we will also provide security to that artifact. So no hackers can hack that artifact. So not only we will store artifact, but also we will provide security. So no hacker can hack that artifact. Normally there are two popular artifact repositories in DevOps. They are JFrog Artifactory and next one is Docker. Next I will explain monitoring and feedback stage in DevOps. Guys, monitoring and feedback stage is one of the important stages in software development process because we can track our software performance. Guys, whenever we develop any software, still there is chance for errors. Software will not work correctly all the time. For example, I developed one software. The software may work in one system or that software may not work in another system. For example, one user can access the software and whereas another user cannot access the software. Even after deployment, we need to monitor our software to check whether the software is working correctly or not. So by using various kinds of monitoring tools and logging tools, we can track system performance, user behavior and also system behavior. That is whether software is giving correct response to users or not. And by using alert systems, we can quickly identify and fix issues. For example, if software is not working properly or consuming lot of memory or system is working slow, if any such issues occur, automatically alert message is sent to developers. And also development team and operations team will interact with each other and they will take regular feedbacks like how that software is working. They will perform various kinds of activities. These are various kinds of activities. First one is setting up monitoring tools. Yes, normally in software companies, there will be separate team in order to monitor software performance. Like if we install software, how much memory the software is consuming, how much CPU power it is consuming, and what is response time, what are error rates, what is our system performance, what is user behavior. They will monitor everything. So in order to monitor all this in DevOps, they will use various kinds of tools like Prometheus and Grafana. And next one is logging. Yes, whenever any user log into that particular software, complete information is stored in logging tools. Like what activity that user performed on that software, how much time is spent on that software, for what kind of user input, how that software is responding. Complete information is stored in logging tools. There are various kinds of logging tools that are used in DevOps like ELK, Splunk and etc. And by using these tools, we can collect, we can store and we can analyze log data. And third one is alerting. For example, I developed one software. That software is not responding properly and it is consuming lot of memory. So whenever it is consuming lot of memory, automatically I will get one alert message. So immediately developer will take action. So if we set alert systems, whenever any matrices exits, automatically we will get alert message and we can fix that issue. And fourth one is analyzing data. Guess analyzing data is nothing but after collecting complete data from monitoring and logging tools, that complete information is represented in the form of bars and charts. So by seeing that graphs and charts, we can clearly identify performance of our software. And fifth one is feedback loop. So based on feedbacks from monitoring and logging tools, developers team and operations team will interact with each other and they will fix that issue. And last one is continuous improvement. So if we continuously monitor our software and take feedbacks, we can easily fix that issue and we can improve our software performance. These are various kinds of monitoring tools. They are Grafana, Nagios, Prometheus, Datadog, etc. And whereas for data visualizing, we'll use tools like ELK Stack, New Release, etc.